special tomorrow night rather than just Thursday or Friday in general. So I figured I'll do my live stream now and get that out of the way so, you know, everything's all prepped for tomorrow. So yeah, a uh, weekly update. Not much. <laughs> it's been a couple days since my last live stream. Um, as you guys have seen, uh, we put out a new behind the scenes episode of the ever-loving, iconic, legendary story called Evan vs. Bush. What that means is that it's the story of how, like, when we were shooting Kong, uh, we had this huge bit happen where Evan fell into a thorn bush. He fell into a thorn bush and was in so much pain, and it was fucking hilarious because um, it was a full jackass crew that day. If you guys want to see that new behind the scenes episode, go check it out on uh, our playlist on uh, King Kong Behind the Scenes. And, um, yeah, let's. Uh, Definitely, definitely, yeah, definitely go check it out. So, that's happening. Holy crap, we already got enough people. Holy shit. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, uh, so that happened this week. Uh, we also uh, did an opening night for Alita Battle Angel, uh, the latest James Cameron production directed by Robert Rodriguez and is by far the best live-action anime movie of all time. I fucking loved it. Y'all need to go see this sh fucking movie. It's fucking amazing. So definitely go check that out. Uh, I'll leave a battle angel. It's a great film. Uh, definitely deserves to make more money because I want a sequel. I want to see more of it. If you want to see my review, go check it out on the main channel. It's a great movie. I'm telling you guys, go see Alita Battle Angel. But funny enough, in the last few days, um, it's kind of gotten me talking a bit about uh, not only uh, you know the movie itself, but an anime, but also... The possibilities of cybernetic engineering. Because something I posted on Twitter, and this, okay, tell me if this sounds completely nuts. Um, can you imagine if somebody who's like a hardcore fan of robot movies, Robocop, Terminator, whatever, decided to basically donate a lot of its body parts to medical science or to somebody who could use something like that to replace it specifically with cybernetic enhancements? So things, so like, say hypothetically, I decide to, you know, donate my eye, like donate one of my eyes, donate an arm, donate a leg, all to an, another person who could use it, but then I say, hey, in exchange, I want to try out some of the cybernetic stuff just so I can become a real life cyborg. As insane as that sounds, for anybody who's willing to do that, that's fucking awesome. Um... Honestly, like, that would be amazing if somebody could do that. Like, just basically donate, the like, not all of his body parts, but, like, some of them to science just so he can become, like, a living cyborg. And on top of that, you know what would be amazing? He could go to cons and legitimately cosplay the Terminator or something like that, and he would win the crowd over because, it's like, his body parts are part of the cosplay. So, yeah, so that's, uh, uh that, I just kind of thought of that today. I'm like, that'd be cool, actually. That'd be fucking awesome. Uh, but aside from that, yeah, uh, definitely look forward to some more night for part two of our Valentine's Day special. Uh, in some other news, uh, I've gotten pretty much the entire audio clip portions of the next King Kong review uh, ready to go. Uh, part two, you're also going to see part two of the Valentine's Day special uh, tomorrow night, but 
uh, the following month, March, uh, we got a lot of plans coming for March, and one of them being a new King Kong review will be coming out this March. I'm not going to say what it is. You'll find out at the end of part two uh, tomorrow night. But, yeah, there's gonna, um, we're going to be uh, doing uh, a few things. On, like, there's going to be a new King Kong review. And it pretty much, it's about, and you're going to love it, it's about 11 minutes uh, for the next King Kong review after part two. Uh, that'll be coming in March. Aside, and on top of that, uh, good news, everybody. Uh, the only thing I'm going to give away here about what's happening in March is uh, one of the videos that's coming out. And I just finished it out. I just finished rendering. Uh, you will finally be seeing the full director's audio commentary for my remake of Kong. Uh, that will be coming out March 1st. That will be the first video of the month. Uh, definitely look forward to that. That will be full on. I just finished it up today. I know. Is the audio shit? Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah, because I'm, I'm trying out a different uh, microphone. How about now? Like, is, let's see here. Um, I, yeah, I have no idea. Um, anyway, so, uh, basically, uh, well, hopefully, let's see how this comes out. Like, is everybody else having problems with the microphone? Uh, let me know. So, yeah, so, uh, yeah, the commentary is coming out. Uh, commentary is coming out uh, March 1st. Uh, look forward to that and a few other videos coming in. I'll also be doing a promo uh, down the line at the end of the month. There'll be a promo for what's happening in March. So, Look forward to that. So that's been happening. And I'm also going to work on another commentary probably after this live stream. I'm gonna, it's right now like 11.26 at night. And I'm probably going to be working overtime tonight. And also because I'm drinking a fuckload of caffeine. Um, I'm drinking a fuckload of caffeine. But anyway, so yeah, that's what's happening. And uh, aside from that, uh, one other thing I do want to point out. I just posted this on Twitter. And it's I noticed lately you guys have been looking for me essentially for guidance or advice for things in life. Not just filmmaking, but just in life in general. And here's the thing, right? Um, when it comes to guidance and advice, I'm like the sh I'm like essentially the shitty uncle who like gives like the worst advice, but it ends up being for the better. Uh, one of my biggest uh, influences in giving people guidance is Coach McGurk from Home Movies. Uh, Home Movies is one, like one of my hands down, one of my favorite shows of all time. You guys need to watch Home Movies. It's a hysterical show. If you like Archer, if you like Bob's Burgers, if you like the actor who voices that guy, you know, the guy who sounds always like this. Very chill dude. His name's John Benjamin, and one of his first big voice acting gigs was Home Movies. Go check that show out. So I'm like Coach McGurk with this shit, right? The worst guy to give advice to. So... Um, sometimes on Twitter, I'll give my one guide to life a day. So, lately in the anime community and a bunch of other shit that's been going on, there's been a lot of drama that's been happening. And I've learned from past experiences just to ignore drama. Just, like, fuck it, don't pay attention to it. But something I've come to realize today, and I'm going to put it simply to anybody who deals with drama, or doesn't even want to be involved, but has to because, like, it's just everywhere... Drama is like a very bad, smelly fart. It's going to stink the room a little bit. But eventually, the natural breeze of life will blow it away, and you'll get a breath of fresh air. There's my guidance to you. Have a good night. Okay. All right. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I would um, basically advise. Is anybody getting into drama just... Um, just basically, just treat it like a bad, smelly fart. It's going to go away eventually. Or it's going to go away pretty quickly. You know, and you just got to move on. Anyway, so, let's move on. Let's uh, have some questions here. Um, we got enough time to, tonight. I'm going to make this, again, probably about a 50, 60-minute uh, live stream, which I usually do. I kind of treat my live streams like a Q&A panel at a con, so they're usually about an hour. So, let's do this. Um, let's see. Audio's fine. I understand you hate Shark Sharknado, but it's no worse than Lake Placide. Uh, Lake Placide, fuck. Well, this thing, Lake Placide, that old franchise, I'd rather watch that in Sharknado. I'd rather watch that than any Asylum movie because, hey, at least Lake Placide started with a schlock film that was obviously, but, but had amazing practical effects in it. So, unlike Asylum, which has N64 style graphics and they're fucking shit. So, that's all I have to say about that. Zilla Universe asks, hey Jack, what are your thoughts on the How to Train the Dragon franchise? Are you excited for the third movie? Okay, so full disclosure, I've seen the first film. And I thought I and I liked it. It was a fun little movie. I've only seen bits of the second film. 
Uh, I haven't seen the second film in its entirety. Uh, the thing is with DreamWorks, How to Train Your Dragon and DreamWorks especially, I've really lost interest in. Um, ever since I went back, honestly, and watched Shrek, it's like, I go back and watch the other ones, and even the ones I liked, I'm afraid to watch again because I'm afraid they're going to be, like, total garbage. Um, because I like them when they come out, but later I'm like, these are not good. Um, ex with the exception of the 2D movies, like Road to El Dorado, Prince of Egypt, uh, anything by Ardman, that shit's good. But things like, you know, Shrek and, I don't know, like, Sharp Tail. Well, Sharp Tail, I think, is a guilty pleasure, honestly. Um, but, like, very, there's just, it's very cringy. A lot of it's very cringy, and it really made way for a lot of these schlock animated films that are out now, like Emoji Movie and shit, just with the least amount of effort. So, How to Train Your Dragon, I've seen the first one, and I liked it. I thought I actually thought the 3D was spectacular. Um, I haven't seen the second one. I don't really have any interest to see the third one. I mean, if I, if I, it's one of those things where if I watch a DreamWorks movie, if it's on TV, then I'll probably just have it on in the background, and if I see something funny, I'll be like, oh, that's clever. But DreamWorks, I've, I've completely lost interest in, honestly. Um, however, I will say the best thing, I the one thing I love about How to Train Your Dragon, I love the fucking live arena show. That was awesome. Uh, funny story, I actually did go to see the How to Train Your Dragon live arena show, which is the same effects company who did the Walking with Dinosaurs show. They did the King Kong musical. They did uh, Skull Island, Reign of Kong, the animatronic. They're good at that. So they did the How to Train Your Dragon show, and they did all these animatronic dragons. Um, I thought it was better than the movies, number one. Um, but also, it's just like, the funny story about it is that when they were doing the show, at the very end of the first act, Toothless broke on the wires. Like, the wires didn't snap, but like, he was hiccup pretending like, we need him flying! And there's, and there's Toothless just like, uh, it's like, it's not even moving, and it, it was like, that's the worst thing about those shows is when the puppets don't work and you can and they still hear the show. It's just like, oh no, you know you feel really bad for them running it and and then like after that happened, uh, the, the act two took a while to get back together because um they kept saying we are experiencing technical problems, um so unfortunately yeah, How to Train Your Dragon is just okay. Uh, that's all I can that's all I have to say about that. Um. Do you think you would watch the movie Glass? It's awesome. I've heard good things about Glass. Not the biggest fan of Shyamalan. Um, he made... You no, know I'll put it like this with Shyamalan. He made three good movies. Uh, Sixth Sense, Signs, Unbreakable. Everything else is total fucking shit. I mean, I've heard things about Split and Glass, which are good because those are part of the Unbreakable series. But everything he did was garbage. Everything after fucking Unbreakable was garbage. Or after signs, I don't know which came after, but not a fan of that director, honestly. Um, let's see. Can you review Lake Passat or the whole series? Maybe someday. I don't know. That might be something to do. Do you ever touch that stuff, Kong, in the background? Yeah, he's fucking adorable. He's he is adorable. Here, here we go. Okay, so everybody who's wondering about this Kong plushie, uh, this was obviously used in my movie when Kong fell, but this, okay, this plushie was from the King Kong encounter back in 1986 at Universal Studios Hollywood when it just opened. This was one of the souvenir plushies uh, that you could get uh, at Universal Hollywood, and I love this because it's got a little, he's got a heart. It shows that Kong has a heart, and it's adorable, but um, what's really cool, I love this figure, like, uh, this plushie, like, I mean, the hands, the feet, the face, they're all rubber, right? But what's really cool about this, I can't put in batteries right now, but what's really awesome is that um, you put, like, a D battery or something, or, like, one of those, like, square batteries in them, and you press them, and he'll roar, like, the attraction, and it's actually pretty accurate. Uh, I picked this guy off eBay for about $20, but um, he's actually pretty cool, and I just have him in my backgrounds in all my videos, but he, like, if you can get this Kong figure, he's actually really cute, and he's actually really soft and cuddly. Um, definitely get this guy, but for those wondering, yes, I do occasionally see this guy around. But he always either falls down and I have to put him back up, or he's just, like, you know, in the background. You know, it reminds me of, like, the Donkey Kong where he's like, hey, 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 dude, fuck you. Um, it's one of those things, but he's fucking adorable. Anyway, so Kong's just gonna go back on the bed. Boom, there he goes, he's in the background. So there's the thing with the plush Kong. 
Uh, have you seen the Spider Verse? Uh, what are your thoughts on it? And do you think it deserves a spot for the Oscars? Yes, animated feature. Yes, at the Oscars. Uh, yes, I have seen the movie. It, uh, Ed, uh, Eduardo, I can't pronounce your name. I apologize. Um, if you want to see my full thoughts on it, uh, go check out our opening night of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Me, Brad, and uh, Evan, uh, we did a whole review of it uh, for opening night. Uh, definitely go check that out uh, if you want. Hi, DTs. We're born. Good to see you. I know. It's, it's super good. Oh, God, it's so cute. It's fucking adorable. Um, I can agree with the split and glass are awesome. A lot of the flushy fell off. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, um, yeah, it's kind of funny, honestly, Brian. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's laced. <laughs> Okay, is this gonna be part of the show now? Okay. Just this fucking bug, like, here, like, here, I'll make him drunk. I'll make him drunk. He's like, it's like, hey, let me tell you something. I'm not drunk. I'm not drunk. You're drunk. Nah, my last, my three girlfriends dumped me. They dumped me. They, uh, they really went back to Canada, and her, uh, she died. Uh, Jessica Lang. And uh, she ended up fucking that Jeff Bridges dude, motherfucker. And he got fucking out of us. She gave that ring, bitch. That ring, bitch. Oh, I need another drink. Oh. Like, 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 like. Uh, and then there's Brie Larson. She went to fucking Earth. Uh, but, uh, uh, what you missed, Justin Tang, is somebody wanted to see King Kong drunk. So I'm doing Drunk Kong. Now, don't remind me. I'm going to go to the Empire State Building and jump off and kill myself. My life is worth nothing. Ah. 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 Goodbye, girl world. Ah. There we go. You get back on there. Alright. But then we see your King Kong getting drunk, essentially. Uh, let's see here. Uh, any events like the top ten sword fights coming in the future? That's a good question, Morgan. Um, actually, I do have plans to maybe do some more top ten lists. Um, the top ten sword fights in the Back to the Future video were great to work on. The only reason I don't do them as often is because they take a lot longer to put together. Because they're essentially like each list part is like a mini review. And sometimes I like to go into a lot of detail, and unfortunately that means they get longer. So the top ten list, they get, they're the longest videos I work on. They're about 30 minutes. Um, I would like to do, I have a couple of ideas up my sleeve of what I want to do for a top ten list. Um, I've thought about things like the top ten best train chases in film. I've, talked, I've maybe thought about like the top ten, I don't know, favorite episodes of my favorite TV show. Like Maybe like the one that I thought about doing is the top ten best Inuyasha episodes, or... Eventually, when I get to Star Wars The Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels, once I get to reviewing those, um, me and Nick Jackson are going to work on those. Uh, we're essentially going to boil down the review to, like, the top ten best episodes of each uh, se season. Or each series, essentially. I'm not too sure. But uh, that's something um, I definitely want to do is more top ten lists. I'm just trying to figure out what the hell. Okay, actually, no. You know what? There is one that is coming. It'll be in November. Uh... I'm fine. I'm. I'm. This. I won't. Ex don't expect it. No promises. But I want to try to get it out in November. Uh, in time for the what is it? The 70, 65th anniversary. Um, I'm finally going to be tagged because a lot of people requested me to talk about Godzilla. Uh, I'm finally going to break down and do a Godzilla review. But it's going to be the top. My top ten personal favorite Godzilla movies. I'm just going to wait until after King of the Monsters comes out. Until I can give my full perspective on the series so far. So definitely look forward to that. That's probably going to be after King of the Monsters. Around November when it comes out on Blu-ray. Um, I do. Like once it comes out and I have my full opinion on it. Um, then I will do my top 10 favorite Godzilla movies. That will be the next top 10. Uh, to answer your question. <laughs> uh I don't know yet. It might be me myself personally. I don't. Because the thing is like. I'm afraid to have somebody do a crossover with me. Only because, Justin, um, I don't want to have to have it drag too long. I just want to get it out and over. I just don't want it to go on for too long. Is the only thing. So there's that. Um, I'm going to hit the hey. Have a great stream. Uh, thanks a lot, Devon. Thanks for coming in. What are your thoughts on Avatar The Last Airbender series? Um, I never watched it. It was never really my thing. I mean, I've never been a fan of what I call the, what I call America May. Meaning, like, it's American-based anime. Uh, so Avatar The Last Airbender, I know it's a great show. I know Dante Bosco's in it and shit. 
Uh, I haven't seen the live action movie, although I heard it was fucking terrible. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't think it'd be something up my alley. Although something I want to ask the fans of um, Avatar The Last Airbender, and especially anime in general, which live action adaptation is worse? Dragon Ball Evolution or Avatar The Last Airbender? Like, which of those two live action adaptations, which one is worse? Let me know in the chat. And then we'll, we'll debate that. Because I think they're both equally as bad. It's just depending which one is the worst. Which one is way worse. So, that's a good question. Um, what Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom would have been better if they had a crossover with Infinity War? Eh. I don't know. Be interesting. I mean, there'd be two Chris Pratt's technically. Um, I don't know how you would fit that in the space-time continuum, though. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on the 1960 Lost World with Claude Rains? Okay, I've seen that movie once, uh, Miss B. Jordan. Um, I kind of like it. I think it's a, like, cheesy, stupid movie. Claude Rains is trying, but he's not my personal favorite Professor Challenger. My personal favorite is, uh, John Reese davis um, even though that one was garbage. Um, but I liked it. I thought, like, okay, yeah, the effects are obviously cruelty to animals, which I'm a big tree hugger. I am a big animal rights person. I mean, like, yes, I do eat meat. I do eat that. But I, I still, I just don't approve of abuse to animals. Let, let me get that right off the bat. So despite this movie obviously abusing animals, the 1960s Lost World, I do kind of like the effects in that range. Like, I do kind of like that idea. But, I mean, aside from that, like, it's an okay movie. Um, what, what... What's the next movie you're looking forward to seeing this year? Uh, basically, for me, my top two uh, most anticipated films of this year are Godzilla King of the Monsters. That's a forgiven. That's a for sure. And the other one, I, you know what? I still have high hopes they'll stick the landing, Star Wars Episode Nine. I know people are kind of getting sick of Star Wars, but I want to see how they wrap up this trilogy. I'm still looking forward to it. I mean, here's the thing with Star Wars, guys. We got to get to this point. We got to understand this at some point. Really, nothing's topped Empire. And honestly, like, can we all be honest? Like, nothing since Empire has really been holy sh awesome. I would say this, that really the best thing about a Star Wars movie, whenever there's a new one, is not the movie in general. It's the hype. The hype is more entertaining than the film itself, I find personally. Um, just being excited with fans, seeing the trailers, uh, being at events where everybody's like, yeah, Star Wars, right? That's what I remember even about The Phantom Menace. Like, The Phantom Menace, like, 20 years ago, like, I was, what, like, six, seven, eight years old, um, and I, I, my first time seeing the Star Wars trilogy was the special editions in 97. I was about four or five. Um, but Phantom Menace, I was there when it was the biggest thing in the world. I mean, at the time, I was more excited for myself, but little did I know that growing up how big of a hype that film was. So, one of the things I enjoyed, especially with the prequels and The Force Awakens and all these movies, I enjoyed the hype. I enjoyed the excitement. I enjoyed buying the merchandise. Um, I enjoyed um, all that shit, right? I, I enjoyed, like, all the stuff that happened. I remember when Phantom Menace came out, I threw a Star Wars-themed party, and I invited all my friends. We all dressed up in these shitty costumes. My mom made a Star Wars cake. We watched all three of the original trilogies all together. Uh, we had a, uh, we used to live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We had a big bar and a, uh, we had a pool table with a, a pinball machine. And in that whole room, we played the cantina band. It was amazing. Like, the hype was great. In fact, actually, my first film I ever made 20 years ago, this is coming 20 years, and I do have plans to release this at some point in maybe in May. My first film that I ever made was my own interpretation of The Phantom Menace before it came to theaters. Like, I did my own version of the movie with a bunch of friends. We just put the camera, we just literally put the camera on one angle, facing the living room, and we just improvised what the movie was going to be like. It was like a big role-play game. And I remember, like, my sister, I ca funny enough, I cast her as Jabba, and all she did was just stuff a pillow in her shirt to make her look like, oh, I'm Jabba. Blah, blah, blah. But she wanted to turn it into a comedy, and I went Christian Bale on her ass. Uh, that footage is somewhere. I will release that at some point. But, yeah, like, that, like the hype for a Star Wars movie, honestly, for me, is better than the films themselves. The films can be hit or miss. Some I like, some are iffy. 
Um, but honestly, like, the hype is what we look forward to the most. So, honestly, guys, forget the fact that the movie's even coming out. Enjoy the moment now while we still have this, because nowadays people are boycotting Star... It's not just the fact they're boycotting the films. We're not celebrating the hype anymore, and the hype's the best thing about Star Wars. So, enjoy it while it lasts, because this could be the last time we have hype for a film like this. So, just do that. Just go enjoy the hype for the movie, and not, like, the film itself. This is probably the last time. So, I'm enjoying it while it lasts. Especially given the fact we're going to start work on the Star Wars prequel soon. Um, I still have my Star Wars fandom. So, yeah, God, to answer your question, uh, Godzilla and Star Wars Episode Nine are what I'm looking forward to the most this year. And both of those you'll definitely see them in uh, opening night for. So, that's my little Star Wars rant for the night. Let's see here. Uh, wow, we got a lot of questions after that. Um, let's see here. Uh, Star Okay. Uh, last week, I went to a Long Beach Comic Expo, reprinting Action Comic number one, first appearance of Superman. Also ordered reprinting. Oh, actually, funny enough. Um, okay, should I show this? Hold on a sec. Okay, I should just show very quickly, guys, a few things I just bought recently. This is a little preview for maybe upcoming uh, an upcoming pickup vlog. But this I bought in New York, and then this I just bought today. I might as well just get this out there uh, for you, uh, Eldwaldo. I can't pronounce it. Um, I bought this in New York at a really cool comic book store near Times Square. It's Batman The Golden Age Volume 1, and what is obtained in this Essential Comics is a reproduction of the first 20 Batman comics ever made. And going all the way, starting back, this is cool, starting all the way back to... Uh, where is it? Where's the cover for this? All the way back to Detective Comics number 27, the first appearance of Batman. Now, the reason I picked this up, one, it was relatively cheap. It was like $25. But what's really cool is that it's the first 20, over 20 issues of Batman, the first 20 Batman comics. So if it was essentially, uh, if, it's, if this was about $25, then I was essentially paying $1.50 a comic. That's a good deal for this many. Now, they have a total of five volumes of these, and I want to pick up more. But the thing is, people, people have said, are you going to read Batman comics? Do you ever read Batman comics? I loved Batman comics as a kid. I grew up with kind of the age where it was kind of the blue and gray Batman with the longer ears, and it was a bit darker. Um, I remember reading a couple of them. Like My favorite origin of Batman was a miniseries comic called The Untold Legends of the Batman. It used to be on a book on tape, which was awesome. Uh, but I remember those. And then I also um, I read a small storyline that involved like Native Americans for some reason. I can't remember which comic that was. But I also remember... Um, was that there was an issue where Batman came to Toronto. It was a Zeller's exclusive comic. And I read the shit out of that. I love that. So, but the thing is, like, I want to get into reading Batman comics again, but I figured if I'm going to review anything, if I'm, if I'm not review, if I'm going to read any of the Batman comics, I should start from the very beginning. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this, and I'm going to really enjoy myself. I don't know if I'll need the other issues, like the other five issues. It'd be nice. But personally for me, because that's like the first 100 comics, essentially. Because if it's 20, so like 20 volumes times 5, that's about 100, right? Yeah. I mean, I've thought about it. I may pick them up. But I think after I get into this, other comics I want to read. I mean, the other comics I've read, I've read uh, Dark Knight Returns, which I liked. I read The Killing Joke. I've read, um, I want to read Death in the Family, because that's been on my list for a while. But like, once I read the classics, then I can move on to other comics. Like, I want to read, again, maybe The Untold Legend again. I want to read that Native American one again, because I haven't read that in years. Um, I really want to read, uh, again, I want to read Death in the Family, Dark Knight Returns again, Killing Joke. Um, are there any other, what are other Batman comics I should read, guys? Because the other, com oh, the other comics I've read, I've read uh, the movie adaptations. I've read Batman and Batman Returns, the comic adaptation. I want to read Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. But I always, one thing I always love are the comics that inspired the film. So, like, for example, Dark Knight Rises, I actually really want to read Nightfall. I mean, I've heard a lot about Nightfall ever since I was a kid, but I really want to get a, a full volume of Nightfall, essentially. So, 
yeah, like I'm really getting back into comics and I've really been enjoying them. So the this if for any Batman banner of comics, pun intended, Batman begins, um, you really want to start somewhere, start with this. The Golden Age Batman Volume One. This is the first 20 issues of Batman Comics. Hi Queen Eighteen, good to see you. Good to see you here. Glad to have it on here. Um, the other thing I actually picked up, uh, I was at the dollar store today. I had to restock on uh, Pepsi because it was like 80 cents a, a, a bottle. But um, oh, Batman Year One's another good one. And The Long Halloween. Those are two I want to read. But um, this was $3 at the dollar store. I couldn't resist picking this up. I used to kind of watch this shit as a kid. And now, although I know now it's like really bad. Um, I picked this up for three dollars. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: The Next Mutation, the complete series. It was the Shadow Factory release. Um, I used to watch this show as a kid. Uh, next to back to back with Beast Wars. Um, I know it's crap. I know it's garbage for any Ninja Turtles fan. I mean, I'm a casual Ninja Turtles fan. I mean, I like the cartoons. I mean, I like. I do like the 80s cartoon. I do like the 2000s cartoon. I didn't watch the new cartoon, the CG one. I haven't watched the recent one. I really more enjoy the movies. Um, I enjoyed the first two. I haven't seen three, although I heard it's bad, but I think it looks so bad it's good. And I really liked uh, TMNT. Actually, TMNT was my first Ninja Turtles movie in theaters, and I have yet to see the Michael Bay movies. But um, the Turtles, uh, I like the Turtles. Like I like the Ninja Turtles. They're fucking cool. They're like... Power Rangers meets Ronin Warriors, but with turtles. And they're fucking awesome. So, um, this is actually a really good DVD set. It comes with a full season, uh, you know, 26 episodes. I think two or three were actually a clip show. But one thing they actually do include here, which I really appreciate because I have a lot of the, the series, it includes the crossover episode with uh, Power Rangers in Space. Um, which I'm glad they put on this DVD. I wasn't too sure if it was on the In Space DVDs because I don't have those yet. But I'm glad it's on here because I really... I remember seeing that episode when it aired and it just blew my fucking balls off that holy shit, the Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles are teaming up. Now, goddammit, Toei, you own both franchises. Can we please get a Power Rangers Sailor Moon crossover? Oh my god, why have you not done that yet? So, there you go. Answering your, that's just a quick little thing I just wanted to point out. So, where were we on fucking questions? Jesus Christ, I went on a tie right there. But yeah, good to see you, Queenie. Uh, guys, go subscribe to Queen18. She's doing really well right now on her channel. Uh, she's a really good Android 18 cos uh, voice actor. Really, really talented. So let's see here. Hi, hi, Elzillo9. Um, have I watched The Disaster Artist? No, um, I didn't get a chance to. I could have saw it at the Toronto International Film Festival, but I didn't. Um, unfortunately, like, I mean, I'm afraid to compare it to Ed Wood, though, because I love Ed Wood. Um, but, like, I'm not too sure, honestly. Let's see here. Holy shit. Okay, I'm just gonna start from the bottom, because there's way too many comments here. Holy shit. Um. Uh, thank you so much, Queen18. No, no, you're you're awesome. You're awesome. You're cool. Um, the show crossed over Power Rangers space, by the way, Jack. Did yeah, okay, everybody wants to know my thoughts on the Batman Ninja Turtles crossover. Eh. Honestly, eh. I don't really see the point in it. Although, to be fair, okay, this is a funny story. You bring this up, JT. When I was a kid, I remember one time I watched uh, Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame at my grandma's place. We rented it from a local video store. And it's so funny because I always used to, whenever battle sequences, whenever I, there was a time I used to watch movies and I would create a role play game around it. So, like, you remember, like, those games, like Nightmare and shit, where you have to put the tape in and you play a board game? I used to do that with movies where I would put a set tape in or like a, a VHS tape in and I would try to be a part of that story. I would try to interact and be a part of that adventure. It's a form of role play. So for me, um, when I watched Hunchback, the whole Battle of Notre Dame, for some reason, using my imagination as a kid, I pictured Batman, Robin, and the Ninja Turtles fighting in that battle. Okay, if it sounds like a smoke thing, no. I actually thought of this idea. And at the very end, when you see Notre Dame, you pan up to Batman and Robin looking up at the cathedral. I thought that was fucking hilarious. So, um, yeah, it's pretty... It's pretty uh, fuck, uh, I thought that was funny. Um, Showa Heisei or Millennium Godzilla? Heisei. All the way. Heisei is my favorite era. Uh, yep, okay. J.R.R. Tolkien, a band of sequel. Oh, yeah, you know what? Very quickly, I want to bring it up. Uh, that 
uh, J.R.R. Tolkien movie I'm actually looking forward to. I know people have said minor negative things about it, but you know what? I don't care. More Lord of the Rings, please. I am open for that, even if it's an adaptation about Tolkien and his life. More Lord of the Rings. I want more, I want more Lord of the Rings cake. I can never get enough of that. Um, let's see here. Uh, have you seen the reveal of the Mattel Brachiosaurus? Oh my god, I want that toy! I want that Brachiosaurus figure so fucking bad! But you know what the problem is, guys? And I said this on Twitter. Let the scalping begin, because now that they've revealed it, everybody's going to want it, and no, they're not going to meet the supply and demand, unless they make more of those. But the problem is, is that scalpers are going to be on that. Also, good luck to the scalpers, because I don't know how they're going to be able to fucking afford it, because I guarantee that toy, guys, you're going to be spending big money. I am guarantee you guys are gonna, on the Brachiosaurus are probably going to be spending between $150 to $200 on that thing. I mean, if Legos right now are two hundred dollars, that toy gonna be about one hundred fifty, two hundred. And but you know what? If the scalpers can't afford it, fine, I'll grab one. Because honestly, it's worth one hundred fifty, two hundred dollars. It is worth that. Uh, what toy is this, Queen Eighteen? It's the Mattel Brachiosaurus uh, for the Jurassic Park Jurassic World toy line, and it's fucking. It looks incredible. This thing is huge. This thing. Is the size of like somebody's leg, like it is massive. But the thing is, it's gonna be about one hundred fifty, two hundred dollars for that shit. So I'm gonna try to get one because really, the Jurassic World toys, any Jurassic Park toys in general, um, I essentially just wait till I find that car boot sales or garage sales or even fucking uh, you know thrift stores is when I usually buy Jurassic Park toys. I don't like to get them new because they're a little overly expensive. So, I like to get everything secondhand. I don't care if it's in the box. So, Brachiosaurus, I am willing to pay money for that. Like, I'm willing to go legitimately to Toys R Us because we still have it here in Canada and go pick that up. So, that's just me. Oh, it's adorable, Queen 18. It's fucking, be it's a fucking beautiful figure. Like, if you're a Jurassic Park fan, uh, this is a definite piece for your collection. It is a, a must-own for your collection. So, I'm probably going to get my hands on it if I can. Uh, let's see here. Are you are you into Common Rider? Not really. No, I have a lot of friend, friends who are into Common Rider, but it's not my thing. Which is your most least favorite Inuyasha episode? I can answer that right away, Justin Tang. So, my number one favorite episode of Inuyasha is I can't remember. I think it's called like Tragic Love Song of Destiny, and it's a two part special. It was a two part episode, but it was also put into a full like 45, 50 minute special. Where it explained, it was about maybe around the second last season, but it goes through the entire backstory of how Inuyasha and Kikyo met. And it explains everything, especially if you're an avid fan who watched the show throughout its entirety. To watch this really gives you a much better understanding of what happened uh, as part of the backstory. So for me, like, even for first time fans, honestly, uh, it's a good place to start, honestly, because you'll be you'll fully understand the backstory if you just go watch that episode. Now, I know it's technically like the 140th episode or 150th episode, I can't remember, but for fans, like for people who are going to get into the show, uh, it's a good place to start, honestly. It's a really good place to start, so that's what I would recommend. That's my favorite episode. My least favorite episode. You know what? I can't remember what it was, but I remember I did a post on it. And I was just like, it was like a three or four parter, and it was nothing but filler, and it was boring to watch. And I never thought Inuyasha could get me bored. But I can't remember which episode it is. I'd have to post it later, but I remember this thing went on forever, and it dragged, and it was filler, and I almost lost interest in watching the rest of the series, or the rest of that season. But I, um... Correct. You know what, Brian? You're right. Because this is family. Family at the time. An hour and a half is just too long for uncreative minds. Yeah, it's pure filler. So I, I can't remember which episode it was, but it was like a three or four parter, and it was boring. Worst episode in the series. Best episode in the series is the uh, Traffic Love Song of Destiny. That's my favorite episode. So uh, there you go. 
Um, the top rack, you know, I may try to get it, but I got the feeling it's, it's going to be rare, man. So you best brace yourself, like, get your keyboard, get your mouse, get your credit card ready, because you're going to have to get that shit. I haven't seen all the Jurassic Park movies, the original and the first Jurassic World movie, however, I really like dinosaurs, especially cute over boards. Uh, here's my recommendations, Queen 18. Uh, watch them in order. Uh, I actually really dig The Lost World. I, I think that's actually a decent sequel. You would like that. Um, the other end, Jurassic Park 3, honestly, over time, especially post-Fallen Kingdom, I don't think it's really... Like, it is, this, it is one of the worst ones, but I would say it's second worst. I'm starting to really feel Fallen Kingdom is probably the worst of the series, honestly. And that's saying something, because I took a real bashing to 3, but over time, at least it had the same feeling as the previous 2. So, yeah, like, I would honestly recommend the rest of the series, honestly, Queen 18. You'd really like it. Um, let's see here. Uh, hey, Jack, what are your thoughts on the Will Smith horrifying-looking genie? Uh, I can see why people are scared, because people were scared of Will Smith, Fish, and Shark Tale. That was pleasant. Uh, honestly, I'm one of the people who think he was totally miscast. Uh, two, rapping genie. Uh, okay, all I have to say, Will Smith, is Kazam. Good luck. Um, but, uh... You know who they should have honestly casted? It would have been a safe safe area, but it would have worked. Ryan Reynolds. Because all they had to do was take Deadpool and paint him blue. And that's all I have to say about the genie thing. Like, eh. Might be the weak, weakest point of the movie. But the movie looks nice. I'll give it that. It looks visually nice. Uh, oh, Al Zulu has a good question. What are your favorite episodes of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? I can name my favorite episode off the bat. It's the first episode I ever saw. It was the first arc I ever saw. It is the definitive storyline for Power Rangers for me. The Green with Evil arc. The first appearance of Tommy Oliver, the Green Ranger, starts evil. A whole five-part arc. It could be a movie, essentially. It could be the sequel. The new sequel reboot. Make that. I love that episode, that whole arc to death. It's amazing. It's epic. It's challenging. It's dark. I love that shit. Uh, but there, there you go. Um, the price for the Mattel Brachiosaurus is $49. So 50 bucks, okay, that's not bad, but you also got to recognize, remember, I'm here in Canada, everything's about 10% higher here. So, like, say you, you're at McDonald's and you get, like, a burger, like, a Big Mac for about $5, uh, here it's $10, just to point that out. So, there's that. Um, let's see, that's cool, Jack. Worst for me is the Lost World. I don't know, why do people hate Lost World, honestly? At least it feels like the first film. Jurassic Park 3 at least, like, has problems. Like, it has issues. It fucks with the law. You almost had me do it. <laughs> um, cool whip. Uh, Eric Bauer for watching our Valentine's Day special from last week. Part 2 will be coming out tomorrow night, by the way. And also, Queen 18... You need to get on that shit. You need to watch this episode. You're going to laugh your ass off. You're in for a treat. Um, even though there are ways it's better than super. Um, I can kind of agree a little bit, Queen 18, about GT. Uh, here's the thing. I did a whole last talk on the best arc in GT, which, in my opinion, is the Super 17 arc. But it does compromise my appearance. Uh, interesting question, uh, Miss Jumbie Films. Uh, you're better off probably buying the replica, honestly. Like, unless you, like, basically... It's kind of hard to decide, really, because, like, the thing is, Narsal's a big sword. It's 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 actually one of my favorite swords in, in all of any kind of fandom is Narsal. That is, like, the Excalibur of Middle-earth. It's fucking awesome. I want a replica of that sword. Um, It would probably be better if you bought uh, a foam latex replica because then you can actually fight with it and you can flirt with it and it looks amazing. Um, up to you, honestly. It's really kind of difficult to decide. Um, I, personally, I've never built Marcel, but if I did, I would probably build it out of foam. I would probably build it out of like foam core, duct tape, all that shit. Make it a buffer weapon. Hey, Jack, what are your thoughts on Stranger Things? I've never watched it. Um... It's not really up my alley, honestly. Like, I know it's like Goonies meets It meets, like, all these Spielberg movies with horror shit in it. Um, now, granted, I like my fair share of Spielberg kid movies. Like, I, I mean, I don't count this as, like, people don't count this as a Spielberg movie. Um, I really like Super 8, the J.J. Abrams film, and that's one of the movies I will be reviewing this year. 
Um, I really dug the shit out of that. So I do, it depends on the child actors because they have to be really good actors. They can't be George Lucas-esque acting. Like, hey, you an angel? No, I don't do that shit. Um, and I heard the It movie, the It remake was great. Um, but I haven't seen that yet because I'm just so, such a sucker for Tim Curry, honestly. Uh, I don't know how Bill Skarsgård's going to top it. Oh, I did see the sewer scene, and I thought that was actually a little better than the original. A bit more scary. So, that's just me. So, um, yeah, look forward to it, Queen. Oh, it's it's great. Maybe, maybe wait till part two comes out tomorrow, and then you can check it out. Um, would you consider, who would you consider to be Kong's arch rival? That's a good question. Because Kong essentially has, I think, a count of the four rivals. The T Rex from Skull, the Rex of Skull Island, um, Gorosaurus, uh, the Skull Crawlers, and Godzilla. I think from a franchise point of view, it's Godzilla. In terms of really just kind of like the overall arch enemy in terms of the lore of Kong, it's definitely the T Rex. Like whether it be Gorosaurus or the T Rex, but Skull Crawlers are still trying, still growing on. I don't know if I would consider them the arch rival to Gong, because the T Rex has always been the arch rival, and these are just basically the two legged lizards from the original. Uh, Carl Denham, yes, he is the true arch rival, um, but I don't know how, though. I, don't you think it would be Jack Driscoll, though, because he's trying to compete to get that, that Canadian Fay Ray ass right there? That's just me. Um, uh, do you think Mark Hamill should be in the East, uh, MCU, he could play Doc Ock. Honestly, yeah, I think Mark Hamill would be really good at that. Um, I just heard he's in a, like, History Channel TV series, like a medieval show, that I'm kind of curious about, just the fact that it has Mark Hamill in it. So, I don't know, maybe someday. Someday, like, I don't know, he could be good in a Marvel movie. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just wetting my glasses. Um, let's see here. Um, Thoughts on the Heisei Gamera trilogy? Out of all the Gamera movies, it is the better movies. I will say that I have those on DVD. Um, not the biggest fan of Gamera, but I will admit I do like the Heisei era. Heisei era for Godzilla and Gamera, I love the shit out of because I do I like creatures and stuff like that where they are dark. Where they're that's the equivalent of calling the um, I guess the '90s Batman movies uh, the. Uh, the Heisei era, or the Dark Knight trilogy is the Heisei era of, of Batman movies. So, I just like my characters like Batman, Godzilla, to be dark, and like, just, like, really kind of destructive and scary. That's the only way you can do them. Thought about, thoughts on Rebirth of Mothra? I've never seen those movies in their entirety, so I can't give an opinion on that. Um, Gaw is considered one of his greatest enemies. I want him in a movie. I want Gaw in one of the films, honestly. Um, my kids saw your... Oh! Oh my god! That's funny! And I'm not gonna respond to it. If you look up in the comments in the chat, you'll know who it is. I ain't answering that shit. Nope. We're, 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 we're gonna edit that out. We're gonna ignore that. Um, let's see here. Thoughts? Okay, let's see. Uh, hey Jack, did you hear about the show called Doom Patrol? The first episode premiered in DC last week. It was great, Brendan. Brian Fraser's in it? Okay, you know what? Maybe. Because I like Brendan Fraser. I love those mummy movies. I don't know, maybe. If he's fighting mummies, then I'll watch it. Dark as in Princess Mononoke, dark. No, more as in, um, in terms of dark, in terms of Godzilla. Um, something on par with, uh, hmm. What's a movie that kind of would give the perfect, uh, Godzilla feel? That's not a Godzilla movie. Um, see, the thing is, what I like about Godzilla, and the one, Godzilla movies I like, is when they show that Godzilla is an impending doom. He's not a hero, he's not an anti-hero, he's not a defender of the universe, he's not a father, he's not an environmentalist. He is a deadly force of destruction, like a hurricane. And, on top of that, because of the, because he's created from radiation, He's in pain. He's in so much pain, he uses that as his anger, his distinctive anger. And he just wants to fuck up mankind entirely. I also like it when humans treat him as a god. 
This is one of the things I'm looking forward to, the King of the Monsters. As much as Godzilla is going to be probably the hero of this movie, we root for him in the movie in a different light. We are not looking to him as a hero or a savior. We are looking to him as a god to defend us from the devil. By that is like one thing you'll notice, especially in the way they are setting up this monster verse, and the way they are setting up uh basically in the leaked music uh using the original Akira Afukabe music. Notice the chant that's in that music, the Godzilla theme, you know, fight for us, fight harder, fight to the end, go Jira, go Jira fight. It's kind of like the Dark Knight Rises where it's about a chant that's supposed to get us riled up. And the whole idea, I, I have this concept, where once Ghidorah is taking out Rodan and Mothra and Godzilla's our only chance, because Godzilla doesn't see us as friend, friends. He sees us as potential enemies that could kill him. He has no respect for us. We need to respect him in this movie. So... My concept, like, what, um, what Ken Watanabe said was like, so you want to make Godzilla our pet? And he's like, no, we would be his. I want to see in the final battle, you know, everybody's in shelters. Everybody's, like, getting out of the city. But those who are trapped and can't get out during the final fight between him and Ghidorah, I want to see humanity chant what they say in the music. As a form of, you know, like, civilian, like, it's almost like Zeus, the character of Zeus, or any god formation where you have the people below who are bowing to their god. They are, like, praying to him to save them. That's what I want to see with Godzilla. I want to see humanity just be, like, looking up to him and be like, save us, please, please, save us. Like, they are seeing him as essentially a god. They are, like, praying to him, praying to Godzilla to destroy this evil, which is King Ghidorah. I want to see that in this movie. I want to see them, like, some people, civilians going up into, up the top, like, imagine the top of the buildings. There are people watching this final battle, and they are constantly chanting, fight, 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 get up, fight, you know, for us, fight for us, you know? And they have to earn Godzilla's trust. They have to earn Godzilla's trust and that's why you see in the trailer, when Godzilla's charging at Ghidorah, he's got jet fighters joining him in the battle to at least cover his ass on any incoming attacks. So that's the thing. There's going to be an allied force between them, but Godzilla really doesn't give a fuck. He's just there to take care of business, and he just looks up at these jets and like, oh, fuck it, you know, better than nothing. He sees them as better than nothing. That's what I want to see with, that's what I like about Godzilla, is that I want to see him as a force of destruction, as a god. His, he has God in his title. He at least deserves some form of worship, respect, and fear. And that's what I want with Godzilla. That's, that's what I want, essentially. Yeah, exactly, Queen 18, it's a war chant. You know, like, imagine, like, it's the equivalent of being in a gladiator arena. You have you have your team, you have your fighter, and you see them in the pit, right? You see them in that pit. You are surrounding this battlefield, and you're all together just cheering on your, your candidate. You are cheering him on to kick his ass. That's what we need to see with this movie. We need to see people rise up and cheer for Godzilla. If they're not fighting... They are cheering. They are chanting for him. And actually, to bring this up, uh, KS25, you're seeing Alita tomorrow. This is something I really appreciated about Alita Battle Angel. People were cheering in the audience, and I hadn't seen that in a long-ass time in a film. People were cheering, saying, come on, Alita, you can do it! And again, that's what I want to see in movies. I want to see people get riled up and cheer when things happen. You don't get that anymore. That's what I miss about the movie. So, guys, again... Go see Alita Battle Angel. It's fucking incredible. James Cameron, great writer producer, but all of it has to go to Robert Rodriguez. Oh, by far my favorite film he's done. So, yeah, like the thing. Kind of like how God Vegeta who didn't care will take it if he comes. Exactly, Queen 18. Like, imagine if, like, say, we're in the middle of this fight. Like, say we're on the streets. We're trying to get the fuck out of the way. Um we need with our heroes we need to 
not necessarily worship them in an overly religious way, but in a way where we can give them the confidence to succeed. Or heroes. Oh, that's terrible. Your thoughts on MLPFM? Okay, Justin, I just want to point this out here. Like, I'm not saying, like, it's cringy or, you know, just, oh, yeah, it's really weird, these 30-year-old men watching. No, 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 no. I can see why people like it. It's the writing. People, like, all the Brody fans I know have said they like it because of the writing. I can see that with this show. I can see the humor. I can see the good writing in it. But is it my thing? Lord, no. Lord, no, am I not a Brony. I mean, I don't understand why it's so popular, but I can respect people who enjoy it and have fun with it. Mind you, the Rule 34 is extremely out of hand, and it is goddamn terrifying. I don't know what goes on through all your through some Brody's mental psyches, but it whatever Rule 34 shit you're into, it's fucking disturbing. Um, but I'll put it like this, Justin. If I'm going to be a Brony to anything, it's not My Little Pony. It's The Last Unicorn. If y'all don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, The Last Unicorn is one of the greatest animated films of all time. It is one of the best films of the 80s, and is one of the best fantasy films of all time. I saw that, I saw a, like, a, a really good remastered screening of that film, uh, and the author of the book was there, and that the author, he's a really great guy. Um, but the story is beautiful. It is one of the, like, out of everything Rankin Bass has done, it is by far the best thing they've ever created. It is Rankin Bass's magnum opus. Um, the cast, holy shit, the cast. Okay, so fucking Mia Farrow, uh, Jeff Bridges, Christopher Lee is in this, Angela Lansbury. Y'all need to see that film. It is one of my, it is my, one of my favorite fantasy films, one of my favorite animated films of all time. Queen 18, you need to see that shit. You need to see Last Unicorn. That is a beautiful film. Like, it is very rare that a film, that I can credit a film as beautiful. And I mean that in terms of visuals, and I mean that in terms of story. It's very rare I can say a film is beautiful. Um, I can say a trailer is beautiful. Like, I thought the first Comic-Con Godzilla trailer was absolutely gorgeous. But two movies I can consider probably the prettiest movies I've ever seen in my life are The Last Unicorn and Ridley Scott's Legend. Those are the definition of a beautiful film in terms of its visuals. And in terms of fantasy, they are the prettiest films. So that's just me. If I'm going to be a brony of anything, if I'm going to like any kind of stallion or any, well, not stallion, but mare, it's The Last Unicorn. That is a beautiful film. Y'all need to check that shit out. Um, let's see here. Uh, I watched it on Netflix before it was... Oh, they removed it on Netflix? God damn it. Oh, sucks. If you're going to watch the movie, watch the Shout Factory release. It's been newly remastered. It they uh, taken out. They uh, put back in all the stuff that was a little insensitive because... The end number two with The Last Unicorn, uh, there was a lot of stuff that wasn't really for kids in this film, like, even though it was aimed at a family audience. Like, you had two times in the film when the character said, damn, which you're like, oh, shit. You have this, when the unicorn, spoiler alert, becomes human, she's essentially naked, so that's a big no-no. And then you also have this fucking tree, bitch, this tree with big titties smothering this wizard dude. Um... The majority of what they cut out in the Lionsgate release was mostly the swearing. But thankfully, Shout Factory put in the swearing again and put it back in. Um, yeah, man, there's so... Dude, watch Last Unicorn, watch Legend, watch Alita Battle Angel. Y'all need to see that shit. It's fucking amazing. Uh, but yeah, so there's there's that. Uh, yeah, there's some sexy treat. Oh my god. The only sexy tree woman out there is fucking Poison Ivy. That's the thing. Yeah, Eric Feller, go see it on the big screen right the fuck now. It's amazing. It's a movie you have to see on the big screen. 
So, uh, yeah, guys, we're an hour in. Uh, I think I'm going to start wrapping up this live stream. Uh, so, of course, as always, uh, if you have, we're going to answer three more questions, and then I'm going to cut it off. Uh, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be uh, cutting this off. Anyway, but very quickly, uh, before we get started uh, on the last three questions, if you guys want to send us fan mail, uh, uh, artwork, or, you know, letters, or questions, or, you know, gifts, uh, you can either, A, send it to, um, you know, send it to us via Twitter or something if it's fan art, or you can send it to this address, Big Jack Films, P.O. Box 326, Queensville, Ontario, L0G100, and we will open it in a fan mail fanatics. In fact, I have down here, I won't show them here, I have two packages from a fan and one is from a parcel thing. Um, those will be coming soon in a fan mail fanatics, so you can already tell we get a lot of fan mail here, so if you guys want to send us questions, yes. Uh, donations for the show. Definitely send it us through the mail. We'll be glad to do that. Okay, so let's answer the last three questions. Um, well, good. JT, JT, go see Alita. Go see Alita doing, doing after the movie. You're gonna fucking love it. And no, I will not answer that question, JT. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, what, uh, I'm not gonna, I've already answered that one, Steven. Oh god, is this what is this what the last fucking Oh my god. Is this what the questions are gonna come down to, guys? Please don't. Please don't make it that question. I am because I'm not gonna answer it. I'm not gonna answer it. I'm sorry. I'm I'm not gonna answer that question. Okay, uh here's the first question. Um are you gonna re-review Batman 89? Because I think you already did. Okay, yeah, so Back in 2012, guys, this is an interesting story. Back in 2012 on my old channel, uh, I did a review of all the live-action Batman movies leading up to The Dark Knight Rises. Um, since then, I've looked back on those videos and I thought they were garbage. But, uh, considering this year is the 80th anniversary of The Batman, and on top of that, the 30th anniversary of Tim Burton's uh, um, groundbreaking film... I will be reviewing Tim Burton's Batman for the 30th anniversary as part of the Big Jack Films reviews. We have great plan. We have really good plans for that. I'm not going to say what, what we're planning, but expect a really lit review for that shit. So there you go. Yes, I will be re-reviewing Tim Burton's Batman on much better in much better detail and in a really epic review. So look forward to that. Uh, Chaos Chaos Sonic 25. Um. Brian asks, when are you going to put, when are you going to add subtitles for your fan film so I can translate them to Japanese? Um, I have no idea how to do that on YouTube, honestly, um, in terms of adding subtitles. I would like to, but I really don't know how. Um, if you guys have any way to help me with that, let me know. Definitely let me know, because I can use some help with that. Alright, final question. Let's, uh, let's do this. Last question. And then we are, we are cutting it for the night. I just, again, Thank you all so much for joining me, by the way. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, I wanted to put this out there early because tomorrow night you will be seeing part two of our Valentine's Day special. I believe admins for your comments can make subtitles. Um, okay, that's that's possible. I don't really have admins. I mostly work so on myself. Um, I could try. Let me, let me try something, Queen 18. Um, but maybe. I think people can submit them to you. You can apply, so and you can apply them. Um, again, I have to figure out how the hell to do that. I might get, I might get somebody on that. Okay, JT is aboard. Final question. This is a good one. What is your favorite guilty pleasure movie? This is tough because I have several. Some of them are animated. Some of them are sequels. Some of them are just whatever. So just name some off the top of my head. Um. One, some of my favorite animated guilty pleasures. Uh, I like Felix the Captain movie. I already reviewed that. Uh, I kind of like The Magic Voyage. <laughs> I know it's completely historically inaccurate to the whole Christopher Columbus thing, because let's be honest, Christopher Columbus was an asshole. But if this was, I would have preferred that history in this animated movie than the real history. Because... Well, one thing, Dom DeLuise, the late Dom DeLuise, is Christopher Columbus is fucking hilarious. Uh, you got Corey Feldman as a bug, as a woodworm kind of character. You've got this evil swarm lord and kidnapping of fairy princes and shit. It's so fucking insane, but I love it. Uh, 
Other animated films, Guilty Pleasures. I mean, again, I kind of like Shark Tale. I don't know if A Bug's Life is considered a guilty pleasure, because I know people who actually like that movie. Um, uh, but yeah, like, I really movies? My most favorite guilty pleasure in the King Kong movies, it's a, like, legit Kong movies, probably People's opinions have changed 2014. I do like that one. I love the ones for me and I'll list off which ones I like. I don't like Godzilla's Revenge. Godzilla's Revenge is a piece of shit. Okay, yeah. Godzilla 98. I know it's not a Godzilla movie, but it's a good Godzilla. It's the only good Roland Emmerich movie. Uh, oh, another guilty pleasure. I love Speed Racer. Speed Racer's a good movie. Um, a little lagging. I apologize. Uh, we're almost done here. But, um, I like Speed Racer. Um, I know it's bad. I know it's total, it's a piece of shit. I even watch Benji Dragon Ball Evolution. I know people hate it. I'm planning to review it at some point. But, and it's insultingly bad. Don't get me wrong, it's a piece of shit movie. But I can kind of have fun with, like, how much nobody gave a shit about that film. Like, nobody cared. And they just don't, they, you can see it on their faces, how much they don't care. But that's just me. Um, I can answer Disney Guilty Pleasure. Disney Guilty Pleasure, ooh, that's a good one. You know what? People hate it. I like the Black Cauldron. I fucking love how dark that is. John Hurt is a great villain as the Horn King. Um, yeah, yeah, fuck, yeah, I freaking like the Black Cauldron. Watch that live action Disney. Ooh, that's a tough one. Live action, guilty pleasure, Disney. It's considered bad. I don't know if Three Musketeers is considered a bad movie. Um, I wouldn't consider it. Um, okay, this is definitely a guilty pleasure, because a lot of people seem to love or hate this. Water World. Fucking great film. Has my favorite soundtrack of all time. Um, I think what other, what other guilty pleasures? Hmm. You guys think, okay, guilty pleasure, you know what? I don't care if I'm going to get hate for this, but guilty pleasure for me, Batman and Robin. Uh, I know it's shit, but you know what? It's a pure comedy, and it's hilarious. I can appreciate some, what was, they were trying to put in that film. I can appreciate what went into making that film. I can appreciate the some of the jokes are funny, um, and I do appreciate like the sets and everything. It it's, looks nice. It looks pretty. I don't like it when Thurman is poison me. She's fucking hot. But, yeah, like, Batman and Robin is a guilty pleasure. Uh, Superman 4 is a guilty pleasure. I know what? People bash Superman 4 when Superman 3 is a worse movie. I love Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. I know the effects are crap. I know it was lazy, low budget. But you know what? At least it felt like a Superman movie. And not... Fucking Richard Pryor going all Jar Jar Binks all over the movie. And making Superman drink is depressing. I love Superman 4. Love Superman 4. And I like Superman Returns. Jimmy all the way! That's another... You know what? I think that's legitimately funny. That is a legitimately funny movie. Jimmy all the way. Um, yeah, I know. Superman 4. I'm not the only one who doesn't... Who likes Superman 4. Um... You know, even Conan, like, I love the first Conan all about it. I like Conan the Destroyer. And fuck, you know what? I like Red Sonia. Red Sonia is a stupid movie, but it's a fun little fantasy adventure movie, even though it's made poorly. I like Red Sonia. Come at me. I like Red Sonia. Um Let me just go through it. Like, I'm just looking at my movies right now. This is an interesting subject. Um Guilty Pleasure movies. Uh, you know what? Even some of the Kong ripoffs I like. Like, you know what? I like Konga. I mean, everything's good about it except for Konga. Um, that's a good, like, I think it's a good dramatic thriller kind of Frankenstein kind of movie. I love that. Um, I freaking love Queen Kong. I think Queen Kong has some legitimately good jokes. Uh, I, Money Peaky Man, I don't consider a bad movie. I consider that a really good movie. Um, I like to fucking... Like, I mean, even Ape, as shitty as the effects are, you can enjoy it for how bad it is. That is, like, the room of Kong movies, in my opinion. 
And I don't consider the room a guilty pleasure. I consider that a you know people actually legitimately like that movie. Okay. Mm. I'm trying to think off the top of my head here. Um Okay, there's a part of me that wants to revisit it in a future review. But honestly, like, I don't I don't know if I would like it just for the fact of how shitty it is. My well, Least favorite film of all time, like my worst movie I've ever seen in my life, is King of the Lost World. There's a part of me who wants to revisit that because I feel like my review, despite it being short and just getting it done and over with for how fucking terrible it is and giving it the least amount of attention of my time, and that's why it's so bad. Um, because here's the thing with King of the Lost World you know how people like, you know, school shooters and shit and all that massacre shit? I treat King of the Lost World like that, how the media should portray it. Don't glorify how bad it is. Black it out. Ignore it. Like, don't give it the attention it deserves. That's how I can describe King of the Lost World. Don't give it the attention it deserves. And focus on the people, the victims, who had to sit through that piece of shit. And anything by the asylum. Feel bad for those people. Pay attention to those people. Anything by the asylum, just ignore it, and it'll go away. So for me, like, yeah, like, in the lost world, as much as I don't want to over-glorify it, as much as I want to put it in the back of my head and never look back, there is a part of me who wants to go back and take a look at it and give it a full, deserving, angry, enraging, destructive review. Because ever since then, I've kind of had a hankering to potentially, potentially, possible, not likely, look at a few more Asylum films. But only when they're called for. Only when I feel like the time is right I should review more Asylum films. But, maybe King of the Lost World might get a reissue. Or a re-review. Because I feel like there's more I can discuss of how much that movie fucking sucks. So, I don't know. But yeah, guys, that's it. Um, that's all I have to say for tonight. Um, of course, thank you all so much for uh, joining us. Thank you, Queen18 for and JT is Reborn and Eric Bauer for uh, Justin Tang for joining us in this live stream. Definitely, guys, go check out their channels. Go subscribe to them. Subscribe to Queen18. Subscribe to JT is Reborn. Uh, subscribe to uh, Eric Bauer. I think they could really appreciate the subscribers. Um, and definitely subscribe to us if you are new here. Um, of course, uh, don't forget to support us on Patreon. Uh, just a dollar or more, you will be able to get early access to all of our content as well as a bunch of extra rewards for helping out the channel. So check out our Patreon and go support us. Um, and of course, if you guys want to email us questions, if you want to mail us gifts, if you want to mail us donations for our, our show, uh, definitely check it out on our address at Big Tech Films, PO Box 326, PO Box 326, Queensville, Ontario, L0G1R0, uh, and we'd love to hear from you guys. We'll plan some fan mail fanatics. So, of course, guys, thank you very much for joining me, and as always, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys later, and don't forget to join us tomorrow night for the part two of our Valentine's Day special, because things are going to get interesting. So, until